everybody. This this final lecture, this final class of this two days training is what I look forward to. And we are having the very esteem, the wonderful the indefatigable, our very own, Madam, PCO, Buki the founder, Bog Zappas, and owner of Service Preneur. We are privileged to have you, ma, to take this course. You are somebody that are proven with results. And that is why there's no other person that is most qualified to take this course than your person, than, your, than yourself. You are going to be taking on some pest control business, the business of pest control in the digital age that we are. Branding, marketing, and business development. You see, all of us, a lot of you learn the technical part of this business. How do you now market? How do you sell? How do you get the customer? How do you retain the customer? You cannot afford to miss this class. If there's anybody that you know that's a registered for this training and it's not him, this is time for the pair to come in. This is the grand finale of this, this version 3.0 of our training. You can imagine what version 4.0 will be like. So come on, everyone with a rousing applause on your microphone, on your video, and welcome the one and only MD of Box Zappers to this session. Can you just on and say welcome, welcome, welcome? She, 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 she. Welcome. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you for taking the welcome. Now you are going to mute your mic now. I also go back and mute your video so that I can enjoy the slide, enjoy the training. Mute now. Then, Madam Shulema, it's a, it's a huge honor to have you. He's a member of, she's a member of Pest Control Association of Nigeria, a ranking member in particular, and one of our very, one of the biggest pest control companies in Nigeria and in Africa, so to say. It's, she's currently in, in uh, Canada and she's been from Canada to us. Okay. I hope so. I'm very soon too. I'll be able to go for holiday and stay in Canada. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good to have you, my God bless you. Before thank you. Your... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you, everybody. I'm not able to share my screen. Okay. Not able to share my screen. Okay. Let me make a course now. Okay. Okay, sorry. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, we can see it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, I think I'll just start by saying congratulations to every one of you that are here. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I, I just also want to say thank you to the Fortune. When we had this conversation, I told him, can we mute our mics, please? When we had a conversation about this class, I told him what he was charging was too, too, um, was too low for what he was going to give, for the value he was going to give. So I just want to say thank you to him as well. Congratulations to every one of you for being here. I'm happy you've taken the time, the, mon the commitment, and even putting down money to invest the knowledge to grow your business. You've heard so many things from all the different presenters. You've, we've talked about the technical things. We've talked about knowledge. And now I want us to go into business. I want us to talk business. So you have the technical knowledge. You have your equipment. You know your pesticides. You know your processes then how do you grow this business that you have started? That's where I come in. And that's what we're going to talk about. So I'm not going to go over my profile again. I think the fortune has done a very good job. The only thing I'm going to say, I'm a very strong woman, woman advocate. I have a passion for teaching and coaching. I love to see women succeed. I believe that women even have bigger capacity than men when it comes to learning and running business, businesses. You know, we, we multitask naturally. 
We are mothers, we are wives, we run businesses. So I really, I really have a strong passion for women and seeing women succeed. So if you're a woman on this group, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I'm always available. Then the other thing I want to mention, I think the fortune also mentioned this, the fact that I set up Servicepreneur. So if you're not following me on Instagram, please go and follow me. I dish out business nuggets and insights from time to time. So I think you have a lot to learn from following me. So let's go into it. Let's talk business. Sorry, I'm trying to, this is blocking my view. I'm going to start with branding. We all know pest control industry is a saturated market and there's a lot of competition. And this is very easy to understand why, because it's a market that you can enter with very low capital. All you need is buy a sprayer, go to the fortune, buy the chemicals, and you are ready to start business. So that's why it's saturated. You had a lot of people that don't even go through any training and they start rendering service. So it's a very saturated market and there's a lot of competition. So where branding comes in is, how can you stand out from the crowd? I don't know if you can see the picture on the left, you see a crowd, but you see that guy in white. The guy in white is standing out. So how can you stand out from the crowd? How can you differentiate yourself from this crowd? That is where branding comes in. And that is what branding is all about. It's a very simple thing. It's differentiation. How can you differentiate yourself? How can you stand out from the crowd? How can you differentiate your services? That is what branding is all about. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So if I ask you this question, who are you? You know, the way God created us, everybody is unique. I'm different from you. You are different from me. You are different from the next person. There are no two people that are the same. So where, where if I ask you, who are you? You will say so many things about yourself. Just like when the function introduced me, he said some things about me. But then if I ask every one of you to say who you think I am, you all have, you all have different things to say. So you have different things to say about me. You know, you I already have a reputation in the minds of some of you, those who know me. So that is who you say I am. So that is what branding is. Branding is what is your reputation out there? So we all have reputation, whether you like it or not, whether you intentionally brand or you don't, you already have a brand out there. You already have a reputation in the minds of people. That is what branding is about. If I were to ask every one of you, that is having a good reputation as a pest control provider important to you, I'm sure all of us will say yes. And I'm happy you're in this class because what we're going to discuss today are things that are going to help you to improve on your reputation in the minds of your customer and potential customers. That is what branding is all about. So let's get right into it. So, I want you to see your brand as a person. Remember we said everybody's unique and different. So even in as much as we are all in pest control business, we are still all different because no two people can be the same. No two people can think the same way. So now imagine your brand as a person. When we mention the name of your company, what comes to people's mind? If I say the fortune, what comes to your mind when you hear the fortune? If I say bug zappers, what comes to your mind when you hear bug zappers? That is your reputation. That is the reputation of your business. So your brand is actually your reputation. I remember I said, whether you intentionally brand or not, you already have a reputation out there. So that is why it's important for you to work on your reputation. A brand is that image that you create in the mind of the public about your business. What do people say about you? When we all hear, for example, Coca-Cola, what do people say about Coca-Cola? That is a brand that is very big out there. When we all hear about Nike, what do people say about Nike? Even just seeing the logo of Coca-Cola, we already know it's Coca-Cola. We already have an image, an impression in our minds about Coca-Cola. We already have an impression about the quality of Coca-Cola. That is all about branding. So the way people define and they see your company is your brand. The impression people have in their minds about your company is your brand. Branding is about creating that unique identity for your business. It's that thing about differentiating your business so that you are, you are different from the next person. The same person, we are different from the next person that offers the same services as you. So building a brand is not something you do, it is something you earn. 
Remember, we all earn reputation. So for example, I can say I'm a good person, I can say I'm a kind person, but what I say is not so much important. What is important is what people say about me. If I say I'm kind and people say I'm not kind, what people say about me matters than what I say about myself. So when you are building your brand, it is not about me saying, oh, I'm a professional, or I have the knowledge, I, I have the certification, or we have, um, I'm customer centric, or we, we keep to time. All those things are good to say. But what do your customers say about you? Or what do people say about you out there in the marketplace? That is what matters in business. Okay, so let's move on, sorry. Okay, so what branding means is that we have to be intentional about what we put out there. We have to be intentional in such a way about what we put in the minds of the client. With branding, you can plant a seed in the customer's mind. You understand, you have to be intentional about the impression you want to make in the mind of your customers. So what promise are you making to your customers? What promise are you putting out there? That is branding. How can you make your promise easy for them to understand? Don't let your promise be something that is bogus. Don't let it be something that is complicated. Your promise should be something that they can easily relate to. Customers, remember customers are only interested in the benefits of your service. It's not about you saying, oh, my equipment is fantastic, my equipment is this, my equipment is that, or the chemicals I'm using are first class, I'm using that. All those things are good to have. They are nice. But what matters to the client is, take care of my problem. What benefits? How does your service help me? So those are the things you should focus on when you are talking to your customers. It's good to talk about your equipment. It's good to talk about the chemicals you're using. They are good things. But the focus of your message to your customers should be the benefit. What benefit is it to the customer? I wake up, I see a cockroach in my house. All I want is for the cockroach to be gone. So when you keep telling me about equipment, about your chemical, focus on how you want to take care of that cockroach I'm saying. That's what the customer cares about. So your branding message should, you know, pay attention to the benefit that the customer can get from using your services. That's where your message should be focused on. So when you are planting a seed, remember you plant a seed that can be beneficial to the client. What is going to be important to the client is what value they can get from your service. And that's where your focus should be on. So when we hear branding, a lot of, sorry, when we hear branding, a lot of people confuse branding with, oh, my name. When I have a name, oh, that's about branding, or oh, my logo, that's branding. A lot of people, when we say branding, they just feel it's about, oh, I'll design my logo, or these are the, my brand colors, or this is my slogan, or this is the way, the way I run my campaign. All those things are good. But it's all these things, combined with the message you're putting out there, that you know, make up what is called branding, that make up your brand. So let's start with your name. Your business name should be a name that when I hear your name, I can easily say, oh, this is what this person does. So a lot of us have to think about the kind of names we give to our businesses. And it's not too, it's not too late to rebrand your services, actually. For example, you, us choosing that name Bug Zappers was very intentional. If I say Bug Zappers, even without saying pest control, you would have an idea of the kind of business we're into. When you, when you see, also your logo is something that you have to be intentional about. Just looking at your logo, can I have an idea of the kind of service you provide? So you have to be intentional about your logo. You have to make sure that your image is appealing to the eyes. You have to be creative with your logo. Also, what, are, what about your brand colors? Colors have meanings. I hope a lot of us know that colors have meanings. You cannot just wake up and say, I want blue in my color. You know, your designer would ask you, your graphic designer will ask you what kind of colors do you want for your brand. But colors really have meanings. I really don't know all of them, but I know as much as I think green has something to do with nature. Um, red, I think has something to do with food. Blue, I think most tech companies use that color. So you can't just decide out of the blues, these are the colors I want to use. Colors have meaning. So sit down with your graphic designer when selecting your brand colors. You shouldn't just be using all colors. 
stick to some particular colors. Identify the colors that you want to use for your brand and stick with those colors. What, what it means, for example, you see Coca-Cola. You never see Coca-Cola using any other color but red. So they don't just wake up and use red today and tomorrow you see blue or tomorrow you see green. No, most of the adverts, you see, you see that red color. MTN, you see that yellow color. You know, so even if you see yellow and you've not even seen the MTN, the name MTN, you already have it in your mind, in your subconscious that this is MTN. You understand? So that is why it's important for you to stick with particular brand colors. And then we have the slogan. Your slogan should be something that is captivating. For example, you know, our slogan, I think our slogan is no one, nobody knows bugs like we do. It should be something that will be easy for people to remember. Like when they see that slogan anywhere, they should be able to say, oh, I think it's this company. So you think about your slogan and be consistent with your message. Don't use this slogan today and tomorrow you go to another slogan. You want something that people that can be impressed in the minds of people. So stick to the same message, stick to the same slogan every time. And then we come to ad campaign. Ad campaign, what kind of message do you want to put out there? Every time you put out your ad campaign, remember you have to be consistent with your message. So all these things together make up what we call your brand, your name, your logo, your color, your slogan, your campaign, your message, all these things together make up what we call your brand. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So why do, you, why do you need to brand your pest control business in the first place? Branding is very critical to the success of any business, like I said. It's about trying to create an impression in the minds of your, of your customers. And to create, um, to create an impression, you have to keep putting out messages out there. When, the more people know you, the better for you. Because for example, you run an advert, let's say you run a radio, radio um, jingle. You know, at the, at the point at which the person is listening to the jingle, they really don't need a pest control service. But then they've heard the name of your company. They've heard your message. The day they now see a cockroach or they see a bed bug in their house, they will remember, oh, I think I've heard this company. No, they will now remember, oh, they've heard this company name. They will now go on the internet and look for you. That is what branding does. You understand? It helps your customers. It helps people, it help, it helps people to distinctly remember you. When you keep putting the same message out there, people come, they come to know you, they come to recognize you. And that is what branding does. Branding allows people to distinctly remember you. They know you. Just the same way we all remember, we know Coca-Cola. With branding, they will know your business, they will know your name, they will know you. Branding also helps you to build relationship with customers and helps you to make an emotional connection with the people out there. You understand? Remember we said focus on the benefits. When you focus on the benefit with customers, you're able to make a connection with them. You're able to emotionally connect with them because you are speaking the language that they understand. You are speaking to their pain point. You are speaking to their problems. I'm focusing on the benefits to them. For example, I'm saying that, oh, okay, if you use my services, I'm going to make sure you get your own back. We all know that most of the time when people see pests in their house or when people get somebody, for example, now we just talked about this infection. Let's assume somebody tested positive in a home. Of course, at that point in time, everybody's panicking in the house. So they call you, oh, we need your services. We need you to come and disinfect and decontaminate our home. At that point in time, the person is panicking and they are frantic. So you can imagine. So at that point, the kind of message, that's not the time you want to be talking of equipment. You want to talk, you have to connect emotionally to what the person wants and assure them that don't worry, we've done this so many times. It's not going to be a problem. By the time we finish, everywhere will be sanitized. By the time we finish, you will be able to sleep in the house comfortably. What we're going to use, we deactivate all the viruses on any contaminated surfaces in your home. So you are speaking a language that they can relate with. So branding helps you to build that connection. With branding, you are putting the right message out there. You are speaking a language that your customers can relate with. Branding also helps you to build trust and loyalty for your business. You know, when you brand your business in such a way that people can connect with you, they can relate with your message, then they trust you. They trust you. So the message you put out there, the reviews you put out there, it makes people to trust you. You build what is called a brand recognition. So for example, like customers that have used you, they go online, they put on reviews online for you, 
And then, so if anybody needs your services and they go on the internet, they read about your customer's reviews. It helps them to trust you because they really don't know you. They don't know you from anywhere. So it's when they see these reviews that they're able to trust you because they see other people have used you and then they can trust people's opinion. They would rather trust people's opinion than trust what you say about your, about your business. They will trust what third parties say about your business. They will trust what those who have used your services are saying about your business. So that is how you end brand recognition. When you end brand recognition, then people are able to trust you and that is how you build loyalty for your business. Branding also helps you to attract potential customers. Just like I said, you know, I find a bed bug in my house. A lot of people, what they do is, oh, when they find that kind of problem, some people will go online and say, is this something I can do myself? They try to see whether it's something they can take care of themselves. Or some people are trying to think, oh, let me look for a, a, a business that can, um, a pest control company. They go online. And what happens? Like I said, they look at reviews. They look at what people are saying about your businesses. So when you properly brand yourself and you put the right message out there and you put out your reviews out there, they're able to attract potential customers. Because like I said, these people don't know you anywhere. So it is what people are saying about you. It is that reputation that you have out there that determines whether they will use your services or they go to the next pest control company. Then lastly, branding allows you to stand out and differentiate, differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Like I said, the marketplace for pest control is very competitive because it has a low entry barrier. So you find so many people out there. So how can you now differentiate yourself from this multitude? That is branding. So with branding, you can stand out. You can decide, look for, look for your strength. Look for how you can differentiate yourself. Look, at, look for how you can stand out in the marketplace and keep anchoring on those strong points so that you can stand out in this marketplace. With proper branding, you can stand out in the market, marketplace. And that's what branding is about. Okay, let's go to the next slide. We're still talking branding. So the components of branding. I think we already went through the visual identity where we talked about the name, Remember what I said about your name? The name of your business, just hearing the name of your business, people should be able to know what you do. Not that there are some names you hear and you're like, oh, what kind of business are you into? That shouldn't be it. From your name, we should be able to know what exactly you do. Remember what I said about your logo being creative, about your logo also speaking, passing a message to the client. Another thing you need for your visual identity is your website. Your website is your, your, it's your, it's your um, billboard. 24 seven billboard, that is your website. What is your website saying? It's one of your, it's one of the ingredients of your branding. It's one of your visual identities. So focus on your website. Your website should be attractive. According to research, they said it takes like eight seconds for people to decide whether they want to stay on your website or not. Eight seconds, that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just eight seconds to decide whether your website makes sense to them or not, or it has the information they need or not. So it's very critical. Use professionals to design your website. And what about your marketing materials? Are your marketing materials updated? Are they speaking the language that customers want to hear? Are they saying things that you know how would appeal to customers? A lot of us will print like brochures. We can print like 1,000 that we printed like five years ago, and we're still using the same information from five years ago. No, that shouldn't be it. If the information is still, even if you still have them, discard them. Print new ones. You don't have to print 1,000 at a go. Print the quantity. You can print in little quantities so that you can easily change the information if need be. Imagine if you have like a, pro, um, a brochure from five years ago where your focus has just been maybe on pest control and all of a sudden, you know, COVID-19 came and you wanted to add um, disinfection services and you're still sending that same brochure from five years ago. How does the client know that you can do disinfection? You see the reason why you can't afford for your marketing materials to be stale? And then let's look, another thing you can also use for your visual identity is uniforms. What does your uniform look like? You understand? Those are things you can use to brand your business and also your vehicle. What is your vehicle looking at? What does, oh, sorry, what is your vehicle? What does it look like? Those are the things that you can use to brand your business. Then let's talk about company values. I'll start with core values. Everybody has core values. Core values are things that are important to you. What is important to me might be different from what is important to the next person. So every, like I said, you are trying to differentiate your business. So your values 
will likely be different from mine. What I think is important to me might not be as important to you. So sit down and define the, the values that are important to your business. What values do you want to present out there? Do you want to, what values do you want to project in the marketplace? You know, do you want to project as a professional? Do you want to, prof um, do you want to project as somebody who is knowledgeable? Do you want to project as somebody who is safety conscious? Do you want to project as somebody who is environment conscious? How do you, what values are important to your business? Sit, you need to sit down. Those are things you need to document about your business and say, what are our core values? You can't possibly be into all the values we have out there. Just pick the ones that particularly speak to you, the ones that you want to project in the marketplace. And you know, make sure you document these values. Go over those values with your, with your employees. From time to time, re reiterate these values with them. Speak about these values. Let them know why these values are important to your business. Let them see how these values contribute to the bottom line. Let them see how they fit, how these values how they, how you fit into the business as a whole the impact is going to have on your business for example if i say that i'm a professional you have to let them know why that value core value is important to your business what does it mean to be a professional how does it impact our business if we are professional so you need to let them you need to um, get their buy in into these core values it is not important for you as a business owner to just say oh well, one of our core values is professionalism so when you say one of your core values is professionalism, it's, you have to leave out that professionalism. You have to actually be professional. In everything you do, you have to leave that core value. It is not just words with not backed by actions. It has to be backed by actions. So we can't just say, oh, we're professionals, and then our actions does not depict us being professional. Then it doesn't make sense. So whatever values you decide for your business, you have to leave those values and you have to carry your staff. You have to carry them along. And from time to time, you have to make sure that you keep talking about these values until it becomes a culture in your organization. Then I'll go back to mission statement. What is your mission statement? What are you out there to do? You know, we have so many pest control companies. What is your own mission? Your mission might be different from my own mission. My mission will be different from the mission of the next person. You have to carve out a mission for your business. These are things that, you know, you have to sit down to do. You know, you have to look at what is important to you. What is your mission? How do you want to carry out? Your mission is more like, how do you want to carry out your own pest control business? Every business should have a mission statement. And things that like your uh, mission statement, your core values, I would suggest that maybe you put, print them out and put them somewhere in your office so that all your staff, they can see it from time to time. And you keep talking about this thing at your team meetings. Let them know, oh, this is our mission. This is how we want to carry out our pest control business. Get their buy-in, carry them along with the, uh, all these things you're doing. And then you also have your slogan. I think I already went, go, uh, went over the slogan. The slogan is just saying, oh, something, after, um, something that is distinct, unique to your business. Carve out a slogan for yourself as well. So in all your communications, in all your messages out there, you're using your slogan. Those are things that can differentiate your business. Your core values, your mission statement, your slogan, and remember also your visual identities. Then we now come to service offering. What are you offering out there? You understand? You can't be, you can't possibly offer everything out there. So you have to, you know, remember I said the customer is interested only in the benefit. So focus on, your, on the benefit. What benefits are you going to provide to your clients? Document those things. What value, excuse me, what value are you giving to your clients? Document them. Then we talk about customer service and experience. You know, those are things that a lot of us just think, have all the, we do it. All these things I'm talking about, we do it, but it's all in our head. But there are things we need to sit down to write. How do we greet our customers? Is it documented? Go and sit down and document those things. Sometimes it's just a three, four, five liner. Oh, you pick up the phone. How do you, when you pick up the phone, how do you speak to the client? You know, as you grow bigger, you get to a point where as a CEO, you are not the only one talking to the customers. You have other people in your organization talking to the customers. You even have your technicians talking to the customers. So because when they get to the client side, how do you want them to address the, um, the client? 
Those are things you need to speak about. Those are things you need to be intentional about. You need to talk to them and say, when you get to the client side, this is how I want it to greet. These are the questions I needed to ask them. Those things should be documented. How do you want to answer calls when clients call into your business? What are the kind of feelings you want to incite in the minds of the customer? How do you want the customer to feel about your experience? What experience do you want to give your customers? Document those, those things. Don't just keep in your head. Let those things be documented. This is the kind of experience we want to give our client. This is the kind of customer service I want to give. This is how I want us to speak to our client. This is the kind of language I want us to speak. This is how I want us to conduct ourselves. Those things should be documented. All those things together make up your brand. And those are the ways you can brand your business. Those are the ways you can differentiate yourself. The way I want to talk to customers will be different from the way you think you want to talk to your own customers. So by the time I document mine and I make sure, and you know, I train my staff to say, this is the way I want you to speak to the customer. This is kind of experience I want us to give our clients. When we go to our client side, these are the things I want us to do. This is the way I want us to talk to the client. This is the way I want us to communicate with our client. These are the steps I want us to follow before we carry out the services. All those things constitute the customer experience we want to give. So by the time I, you know, I already said, would you, I define mine. For example, I had, we just hired somebody who came from um, another pest control company. And when the guy came, he was like, oh, the way you guys do things here is different. Yes, it's different because every business should have their own identity. So carve out how you want your business to operate. Carve out how you want to deliver your service to your business. Write it out, spell it out. One, two, three. How do you want to speak to your customers? How do you want to communicate to your customers? Document those things. Document your values. Document the benefits you are giving to your client. Document your visual identity. Okay, this is, um, I am, no, sorry, docu you don't document your visual identity. It's your name, your logo. Focus on your visual identity. Be intentional about them. Don't just leave things out there. Be intentional about those things. A logo means a lot. Your business name means a lot. Your marketing materials, your message, your message at all times should be consistent in anything that you give out. Whether in your internal communications or even your external communications, your message should be consistent because it's all part of branding your business. And I, like I said, branding is by action and not words. I can say all wonderful, excellent words about my business. If I'm not backing it up by action, then the branding is in vain. It means nothing. So it is not just putting out all those good words out there. Oh, we are the number one pest control in Nigeria. We are the best pest control in Nigeria. You can be the best control. You can tell yourself you are the best pest control company, but what is your customer saying about you? Does the customer agree that you are the best pest control company in Nigeria? Are people would people rather take the opinion of the customer, customers over your own opinion, over what you say about yourself? So whatever words you say about yourself, back it up with action. You cannot say that you are professional and you are not being professional with the way you carry out your job. We've gotten a lot of technical knowledge today. Go out there and implement those things you have heard. Go out there and see, you know, at any point in time as a business person, to be honest with you, to be successful, you have to just keep thinking about how you can improve on your service. When it comes to pest control service or any service business as a whole, there are two things that are critical. It's a people business and it's a service business. So people and service, those are the two critical things that are important in the service business, especially our pest control business. So whatever branding efforts you have out there, you have to back it up with action. If you just, or if you are just using big words and big grammar, it comes to nothing if it's not backed by action. So your branding efforts, you actually project the reputation you want to have out there. What reputation do you want to have? If I want to have a reputation, uh, for example, as a professional, my message should be speaking to professionalism. And I should also back up that message with action in everything I do. To be honest with you, even when it comes to, I see a lot of pictures online, people post things on Instagram and you look at some things people post and you're like, wow, this is not professional. So if, for example, I'm projecting that we're prof a professional pest control company. And I put things out there that depict that um, we're not acting professional. Then I'm contradicting the reputation I want to put out there. 
it does not agree with the reputation I put out there. Sometimes our guys, they bring pictures from the field and I see some pictures and I'm like, I can't post this. No, 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 this guy messed up. I go back to them and I was like, no, you didn't use this properly. Maybe your PPE was not properly used. I said, no, you can't do this. You understand? So if, for example, I put that kind of picture out there, then what I'm saying, the picture does not agree with the image I'm trying to project for the business. So that is why it's important that whatever words you're using, you back it, we back it up with the right action. I cannot say, for example, that, oh, we're a knowledgeable company or we're a trained company. And then I go and say something on social media that does not show that I have the knowledge, the right knowledge. Or I go, go and put information that is not true out there. Then how does that show that we're a knowledge business? That means you are not knowledgeable even about what you claim you're doing. So whatever words you use for yourself, back it up with action. Back it up with action. So your branding, like I said, requires continuity and consistency. You have to be consistent about branding. It's not something you do, <clears throat> excuse me. It's not something you do and then you stop and you pick up again. It's continuous and it's intentional. Your good business reputation is intentional and it takes years to build. Coca-Cola just did not get to where they are today. It was intentional. So um, your brand, you can't expect to start business in one year and expect to build your brand in one year. No, you can't get brand recognition in one year. It's something that you keep doing. You keep building on it. It's, the, it's like blocks. You keep building on it, keep building on it until you become popular, until you become known, until you have a brand recognition. And then you build what is called a brand trust. So it's something that takes time to build. It's intentional. So you don't have to worry about it. We all started small. When I started, I start, I keep saying this thing. When I started, I started for my BQ. And I started with just one staff. So if I look back now, the journey is over 10 years. So believe me, you can start small. It's not a problem. But even in your in being small, still try to start focusing on your brand because as you grow bigger, you understand you still, as you grow bigger, you're supposed to be building brand recognition. So it doesn't matter whether you're small, the customer is not coming to inspect your premises. Luckily for us, pest control business, customer is not coming to inspect your premises. So it doesn't matter if you are small, but you can be small, but project out there. What you project out there is what is important. You have to project that you're professional. Nobody is coming to say, oh, let me go and check their office. No. That is not important to the customer. What is important to the customer is the benefit and the message that you are projecting out there. And it should be back with action. Branding is an investment. It is not something you just always an expense. No, it is an investment. You're investing in your business. You know, growth is intentional. And branding is a long-term investment. Like I said, it's something that you build over time. Your cost of branding is an investment. It's not an expense. What I see is that a lot of pest control business, I think we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves. And so I see, um, you know, I belong to two, two forums in pest control. And what I see from a lot from the interaction on those forums is that people are not willing to spend on their business. You have to spend money to get money. So you have to spend money on your brand. You have to spend money to build your brand. It's an investment. So, you know, when the fortune announced this um, training of 10,000, we would expect to see nothing less than 100 people in this training because it's a giveaway. We have to be honest with ourselves. It has brought like eight speakers over two days to give out knowledge. And yet, how many people are here? So it just shows you that people are not willing. They are not yet ready to spend on their business. Believe me, for the first maybe 10 years of the business, I was not really taking money out like that. Most of the things that are coming, I put it back in the business. I keep looking for, okay, um, we have new, uh, what other equipment can we buy? How can we improve? How can we make sure our technicians, technicians are not too tired? Oh, what chemical can we use? We are getting resistance. Customers are complaining. How can we service them better? You know, so those are things, you know, you should focus on. How can I get, how can I, how can I improve on the business? You know, I'm constantly learning. So when you now put this kind of um, training out there and then you, do, you have how many people registered, it's really sad. So branding is an investment. You have to consciously invest in branding. It's not something that you just leave. You remember what I said, whether you personally brand or not, you already have a brand. You already have a reputation out there. 
whether you want to control your reputation, branding is about influencing the reputation you have out there. So whether you influence it or not, you already have a reputation. So branding, branding has to be intentional. You have to allocate money to market your brand. It's not something you leave out there. You have to be intentional. You have to allocate money to it. And then your brand should represent, like this last one, I think I already spoke about, you have to live up to your brand. Whatever you say you, you are, live up to it. If you say you are a professional, then act professionally. If you say you are a knowledgeable, knowledgeable press control company, get knowledge. Wherever they are talking about knowledge, we should find you there. Wherever you have the industry giant, we should see. If you say you are an industry giant, you understand, you are one of the, you are the best pest control company in Nigeria. Then wherever we see people talking pest control, influencing pest control industry, we should see you there. It doesn't make sense if you say, oh, we are the best uh, number one pest control company in Nigeria. And then they're having like a pest control conference and you are not there. How are you then number one? You are not number one. So whatever you say you are, live up to that word, live up to that brand, live up to that message. Whatever you say you are, live up to it. If you say you are a safety conscious pest control company, then we should see, you should project safety in everything you do. That is what branding is about. It must be backed by action and not just mere words. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about branding strategy. Branding strategy in a nutshell is just how do you want to develop and communicate your brand identity to customers and potential customers? Remember, we talked about them. We talked about your visual identity, your core values, and then the critical thing here is your target audience. Your branding, your, you should have a strategy. And when I say strategy, it's actually things, it's not something that should be in the head. I keep saying not in the head because those things are things we should sit down to document. So your branding strategy document, you have you should talk about your core values. You should talk about your target audience. Remember, you have different audiences. And the message you give to each other audience will be different. So you have your target audience. You have your brand element. Then you want to talk about the last one. The, um, the other one is about what content do you want to give each target audience? How do you want to communicate to them? How do you want to reach out to them? What benefit is important to each target audience? The benefit to a school, for example, is different from the benefit to a residential client. The benefit to a food factory is different from the benefit to a hospital. The benefit to an airline is different from the benefit to oil and gas. So you have to speak the language that each target audience understand. You have to speak the benefit to these different target audiences. Then how do you want to differentiate your services from that of others? You should need to put that in your branding strategy. You need to think through it and actually document them. So that if, to be honest with you, what you don't document, you can't practice. What you don't document, you have to be intentional. You have to document them. This is how we want to differentiate our services. This is what makes us stand out. This is the, you know, what you are saying, for example, there's something I also have. Sorry, there's, for example, I said something about, okay, the bug zappers technicians. This is the, who the bug, you can define how you want your employee to be. How do you want to employ you? What, you know, you have to have a, rep a representation, the qualities that make that your technician or your employee, and also talk about how you want them to act. Because whatever we do in the service business, we need to be able to standardize our service. You send somebody to a client today, the person shouldn't act a certain way. You send another person to the same client and the person acts in a different way. No, we need to standardize our process, our processes and standard, standardize the service, standardize your customer experience. It doesn't matter who you send to the customer. They should get the same experience every time. So that is where it comes in. That's where it's important for us to, you know, make sure that we differentiate ourselves and we document those things. So because when you document them, then it's easy for you to kind of implement. It's difficult, it's easier, it's now easier for you to train your staff to say, this is how we want to act. These are the things that makes us different. And also in your branding strategy, what makes you different from other businesses in the industry? Think about it. There are so many, pest control is very wide. Do you want to play in all the areas of pest control? If you want to limit yourself to a particular area, talk about it. What makes you different? 
Write it out. Think through those things. What, what can differentiate? What are differentiating factors? Think about them and document them. Those are the things that should be in your brand, um, your branding strategy. And believe me, it doesn't have to be any bogus document. Just think about it and write it down. When you now write it down, it will be easy for you to implement and train your staff on them so that you can say, oh, this is what makes us different. This is how we want to act. This is what makes us stand out. This is what differentiates us from the next pest control company so that you can actually train them on these things. Now we've talked about branding. Branding and marketing go hand in hand. The first step in marketing is to know your customer. There's this saying, not everybody is your customer. I don't think we can overemphasize this. You cannot service everybody. You cannot be speaking to everybody. We have so many people out there. You cannot speak to everybody. You have to narrow down your audience. You have to identify the people you want to service. The people you want to service are your target audience. You know, so sit down, document your customer profiles. You can have as many profiles as possible. You know, document your customer profiles, document the people you want to service. Everybody is not your customer. You know, there are so many times even on the platform, people will complain and say this because some customer, and you know, at the end of the day, you can't service everybody. So focus on the people that resonate with your message, the people that, you know, you connect with, with the message you are putting out there. Focus on those categories of people. Develop customer profiles. You can call them buyer profiles. Develop buyer profiles, you know, and speak the language that would connect with those customer or your target, those target audiences. So first of all, we said you should know and understand your customer. Sorry, let me admit it. The first of all, we said you should know and understand your customer. You have two types of customers. You have internal customers and external customers. Your internal customers are your staff. I said pest control company is a people business. There are two critical things that matters in a pest control business. Your people and the service that you are providing. So your people are your number one customer. Your people are your employees. So let's start with the internal clients. Who are your employees? So we'll start with your staff. I find that a lot of people find it hard to invest in staff because we feel like, oh, after investing so much in them, they will go, they'll just get up one day and say they are going. It is okay. They can go. But of what, of what, whose benefit is it when you train them? It is your own benefit. A, custom, a, a staff that is trained, a staff that is well taken care of will deliver excellent service to the client. A happy staff will deliver excellent service. A trained staff will deliver excellent service. So when we refuse training, to when we refuse to give them training because we feel like, oh, we don't want them to go away with knowledge or we think that they can go and set up their own pest control business, then you are not helping your business. You cannot possibly be the only one that will be knowledgeable in your organization. When you do that, your business will not grow. Invest in your staff. Invest as much in them as you are investing in yourself. I know some people have invested in their staff for this training. I commend you. You're doing the right thing. Keep doing that. When you invest in your staff, you're investing in your business because it will, trans it will translate to a big impact to your business. So make sure that you train your staff. It's very critical. You cannot possibly be the one to be at all client site. So your, your, your employees are the ones that make first impression on the client. So it's even more critical for you, for them to be trained. It's more critical for you, for them to be knowledgeable because they are the ones providing the service. They are the one that make that first impression with the client. So start with training them. As you invest in yourself, invest in them. Yourself and your staff are the face of your brand. Yourself and your staff are the face of your brand. So invest in them. Then your external customers, your external customers now are those that buy from you. Those are your clients, regular clients. So your first customer is your staff. Treat them well, treat them fairly, invest in them. The way you treat them determines how they will treat your real customers. Your company is only as good as your staff. 
Your company is not as good as you, the CEO. The company is only as good as your staff. They are the weakest link. So your company is only as good as the weakest link. Invest in them. When you invest in them, you're investing in your business. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter if they leave. Invest in them. It's a, it has to be a conscious decision. Now, um, now let's talk about the real customers. The real customers, those external customers. Like I said, not everyone is your customer. The moment you accept that, the better for you. So who is now your customer? Who is your real customer? Your, who is your ideal customer? Like I said, you have to sit down and identify your target customers. And you can have multiple targets. So with, um, your buyer profile, you start with a, um, a fictitious person, somebody who represents your ideal customer. You may have more than one buyer profile. It's not a problem, especially in pest control. You have multiple customer profile, customer audiences. Okay, so because your pro, um, the service you provide is a good fit for different types of people. For it, and I give an example. For example, you have residential clients, you have commercial, you have industrial. So let's start with residential. You know, from my own experience, I find that, that a lot of pest control decisions, buying decisions are made by the female, the woman, um, the woman of the house. They are the ones that make that decision, especially for like families. So create a buyer profile. Who are the people you want to speak to? You have to speak to people who are receptive to your message. Like I said, if more if women are the one making more of those pest control decisions, then your your message should be able to resonate with the women. So define your ideal customer. Is it female? Is it male? What is their age range? You don't want to be speaking to a nineteen year old. A nineteen year old does not care about pest control. So define your age range. Then what kind of people are you you know speaking to? Do you want to speak with professionals? Do you want to speak to business people? Where are they located? We cannot possibly even serve the whole of Lagos, not to talk of the whole of Nigeria. And you can't, spend, you can't serve the whole of Nigeria, not to talk of the whole of Lagos. So speak to where, where are they located? You know, there has to be specific location. And then, you know, like I said, you have different buyer profiles. When it comes to commercials, what are the type of commercial clients you want to speak to? Pest control is critical to some industries. Identify those industries that are mandated or they are required to do pest control. So where, where, who are those industries? Which are those industries? We, know, we already know hotels, we know schools, we know restaurants, we know hospitals, we know manufacturing, you know, um, distribution centers, warehouses, storage facilities, oil and gas um, installations, offices, there are so many out there. Identify those categories. And then for each category, look at what message is important for that category. The message that you speak, the kind of language you speak to the hospital will be different from the language you speak to a food manufacturing company. The language you speak to a restaurant is different from the language you'll be speaking to a school. To a school. The language you are speaking, for example, to, um, to a residential is different from what you'll be speaking to a commercial. So sit down and document all these profiles so that you are speaking the right message to them. Then for all these buyer profiles, where can you find them? If you're on Instagram and you're looking for food factory, I think you're wasting your time because they will not likely, you, can, you are not likely to reach out to them that way. On Instagram, on Facebook, you are likely to reach out more to residential clients. So you have to be intentional about your marketing. So when you, when you identify all these buyer profiles, then you now have to say, you now have to think of how do I reach out to each one of these audiences? Where can I find my residential clients? You know, what are their interests? What are the things that matters to them? What are their pain points? What are the problems that residential clients usually have? So that you are speaking a language that they can connect with. You are speaking a language that they can resonate with. You are, you are talking to a residential client, you are talking IPM. They can't understand. To, to be honest with you, even if they can understand, they cannot relate to it. Because as far as a residential client is concerned, I just don't want to see this pest in my house. I don't want to see this bug. But when you are talking IPM and you are talking to a manufacturer 
they understand IPM. They can relate to IPM. But when you are talking to a residential client, the way the language you speak will have to be different. You have to speak to their pain. You have to speak their pain. Look at their pain points. Look at their problems and speak the language that they can connect with. So that is why it's important to break them into different um, buyer profiles. You can't just be speaking a general language. You speak the same thing on Instagram. You are speaking this, you are speaking that. No, 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 no. You have to have different messages. Like for example, what I post on, I don't post everything I post on Instagram or LinkedIn, no. Because the people in LinkedIn are professionals. You likely find all those corporate clients on LinkedIn. So the message I put on LinkedIn is not the same message I'll come and be putting on Instagram. When I'm saying, oh, um, let's help you to get, um, take, you, um, take back control of your home, I can't go and be putting that one on LinkedIn because most people on LinkedIn are professionals. They are serious. You know, you want to, if you want to reach out to a corporate client, that's where you find them. So I will not be speaking that language there. It's not everything you post on Instagram that you just automatically post to Twitter, post to. You have to be intentional about your post. Make sure that you are speaking to, you are speaking to the right audience. Then what is important to that audience? You have to think through it. What message is important to that audience? So think through it, identify your buyer profiles, and think of the message, sit down and document, what are the pain points? What are the problems that this important, what are the things that are important to these different buyer profiles and speak the message that they can connect with. That is what customer, that's why your customer is all about. So it's something that needs to be documented. It's not something that should be in your head because when you're intentional, even when you're running your promotion, you can know that, oh, I'm running this promotion to target, to I'm trying to target residential clients. This promotion, I'm trying to target businesses like me. This promotion, I'm trying to target schools. This promotion, I'm running to target hospitals. So you, that is why you have to segment your customer audiences so that you are saying that you are speaking the language, you are able to connect with pain points or you are able to connect with their problems and they can connect with you. That is why important for you to do this. Now, oh, I think I already even said a lot about this. Creating your buyer profile. To create your buyer profile, start with your existing clients. You know your existing clients, you know them so well. You know uh, the problems, you know their pain points, you know what is important to them. So start with those you have. Based on what you have, you cannot create your buyer profiles. Look at look across the clients you have. You have different type of clients. So for example, your residential client, sit down and think about it. What is important to your residential client? Write that down. You understand what are their interests? Where are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on um, are they on Twitter? Where are they? You understand so that you can be using that communication channel to reach out to them. So answer this question: Who are their customers? Where you can find them? Then what kind of communication channel do they prefer? Do they prefer you to reach out to them by text messages, by WhatsApp? Do they prefer emails? You know what do they want? Phone calls. You already know them, so start with them. That would determine how you want to reach out to customers like them in future. Then, like I said, where are they located? Most of your clients, are they based in Lagos? Which area of Lagos are they in? So if you already know most of your customers are in a certain area, then when you are speaking or you are trying to run an ad or you are trying to get more customers, you know where to go to. Then what is their biggest issue? What kind of issues are you being called to, problems are you being called to take care of? For example, I just find out that for some reason, we're almost turning to bed bug um, specialists. Almost on a weekly basis, we treat bed bugs now. So in my head now, I'm thinking, ah, maybe we are even bed bug kingo. We are bed bug champion. That's what we are, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily decide this is what you want to do. But based on the problems and based on the kind of request you are getting, you kind of build expertise in that area. So now we've built that expertise in bed bug. Bed bug is now is like commonplace for our guys. They just, you know, it's almost routine for us now. So somehow sit down and think about it. What are the biggest issues of your customers? Think about it. That will also help you to narrow your efforts, know where to, for example, you are thinking of buying an equipment. For example, you want to buy thermite equipment. Are you actually getting thermite um, treatment request? So why invest so much in thermite equipment if you are not getting the request? So that is why it's important for you to do this exercise. When you do, sex, do this exercise, you actually know where to put your money. You put your money where the request is. 
you know where to put money. If you want to invest in an equipment, you know the kind of equipment that is necessary for it. Then what do your clients want? I think, you know, what they want, what exactly is important to them? What do they want? Do they want people that come on time? Do they want um, you to be responding quickly? Do they, um, is professionalism important to them? Is the appearance of your technician, is it important to them? Then how can you describe these people? Do you understand? Is there, do they have like common interest? Can you describe them? What do they do for fun? Because it's important. If um, the kind of people you are dealing with, what is their interest? Where can you find them? Sometimes you need to look at all those things to determine how you can reach them, to also determine the kind of message you put out there, to find out what will interest them, what they can connect with. So you have to break down, you know, think deeply about all these things to know how to create your bar profile. So create your bar profiles. Remember, you can have more than one. Then for corporate clients, it's important to realize that your customer and your consumer might not be the same thing. Even if it's for some residential, even so for some businesses, not for pest control though. But for your corporate clients, your customer, your consumer might not be the same person. For example, when I say your consumer, your consumer is the end user, the person that you actually service. But the person who makes the decision, the decision maker is your customer. That's the person who makes the decision, but it's not necessarily the person that you're going to provide the service for. So you have to know, you know, when you are targeting your marketing effort, your targeting effort will now be targeted at the customer, but it doesn't mean that that's the person who is going to consume the service. So that's important to note when you are trying to get corporate clients. Then when you, for, so for every, so for every client you're trying to target, Identify the consumers and identify the customers. Sometimes the cost, consumer and the customer are the same. It's not a problem. And I'll give examples. Like when it comes to hotels, for example, you find out that people making decisions are the management people. You have the GM or it could be the procurement manager, but then the consumer are the people like maybe your kitchen, the kitchen staff, maintenance, housekeeping. They are the people who will say, oh, you did your job or you didn't do your job well. They are the people you relate with on a day-to-day -day basis. Those are the consumers. But really the decision maker is the management staff, which could be like the general manager or the procurement manager. So when you are targeting your marketing efforts, your marketing effort should be targeted at the customer not the consumer. You cannot go and be talking to a housekeeper when the person who is going to make the decision is probably the GM. For example, also in a restaurant, it's usually the manager. In a factory, it could be the procurement manager. Meanwhile, while the person who is going to be the consumer could be the quality or HSC. So when you are targeting your marketing effort, target it to the right person. And this is not cast in stone. It might be different for, it will be different for different clients. I'm just putting this out there based on my own experience. Then let's talk about content marketing. When it comes to content marketing, you have to use information you gathered from your research to create your content for marketing. And when I say research, remember you, we said start with your existing customers. So based on the existing customer database you have, you already know the customers you service, you know what is important to them, you know, their each, each, you know their interest, you know their location. So with all this information you have gathered, you now have to create your content for marketing. For example, for corporate clients, I already know, okay, maybe this is the way, how do you reach out to hotels? Do you understand? What kind of content? That is why you cannot just have like one brochure that speaks to everybody. Sometimes you may need to target your brochure to specific customer audiences to specific buyers. So don't just have one generic thing that when the man starts to read it, he will say, hey, how does this concern me? And drop it. You can have things that you can tailor to all these different buyer profiles. So from your research, let your content be targeted to different buyer profiles. Let it speak to their needs. Let it speak to their problems. And then, like I said, another thing is your service description should also ideal your ideal customer. Your message should speak to the target audience. I cannot overemphasize this. And also when you are, when you are designing your content marketing, focus on the benefit over features. Don't focus on the fact that, oh, we have high class equipment or we have uh, world-class pes uh, pesticide. You don't focus on those kind of things. Focus 
focus on the benefit. And when I say benefit, oh, for example, you're talking to a big brand, let's say a manufacturer, for example, you have to say things like, oh, we'll help you protect your brand reputation. We'll make sure oh, that we help you to reduce losses to your product. We'll make sure we're talking to a restaurant. You want to say that we may help you to protect the food that you serve to your customers. We'll make sure we help you keep your facility pressed free. We'll make sure, you know, so those are the kind of things they can relate with. They cannot relate with you saying, oh, your equipment is world class they cannot relate to it when you say your pesticides are world class it doesn't mean much to them what means much to them is the fact that oh you are telling me that you give me peace of mind you are telling me that my facility will be pest free you are telling me that my brand name will be protected my reputation will not be ruined out there you are telling me that you reduce losses product losses for me you are telling me that you keep my facility germ free you know, those are the things that they can relate with. So let your content marketing be tailored, speak the language that the customer can connect with. So that's it about content marketing. Then let's talk about what, make, um, let's talk about, you know, still in relation to content marketing, focus on what makes your business unique. So what makes your business unique? When you are creating your, either your business pitch, your post or your ads, you need to be able to think about what differentiates you. So I put some questions out there to guide you. What can you do for your customers? Instead of saying, what can I get for my customers? Think about what value am I giving to my customers? That should be your focus every time. You know, we have this saying that we always say that, okay, like we tell our guys, if we collect money from a customers and we don't do the job well, it's like stealing from the customers. So the focus, the guys also know that the focus is on value. The focus is about customer experience. It's about making the customers happy. When you take money from a customers and you know they are not happy and we don't address their concerns, it's like stealing from them. So we place a high value on we place a high value on the benefits to the customer. So focus on the value you are giving to the customer. Money follows value. Please, money follows value. Don't focus on money. Don't let your focus be on money. Let your focus be on value. When you keep providing value, the money will come. So your focus at this point in time is what can I do for my customers? How can I improve the value that I give to my customers? That should be priority for every business person. Keep improving on the value you give. So what value do you provide to your customer? What makes your prices worth it? What makes your prices worth it? One of the things we tell our guys is that, okay, we'll go there and you think you can just go there and spray and leave. No, it is not enough. You understand? We have to justify this money we are collecting from the client. We have to give our best at all times. So we are very passionate about value. We are very passionate about making sure that we, we give people value for the money they are taking us. They are taking we're money for the value we're taking from them. So, you know, so it's, not, it's really critical. You know, in pest control, because I said it's a very saturated market, it has very low entry barrier. So you find that a lot of people just feel like, oh, they spray, collect 50,000. No, it's beyond that. What value, other than spraying, what other value are you giving your clients? Are you educating your client? What, what are you giving the client? Is it just to go there and spray? Are you getting to the root cause? Are you getting to the root cause of the pest problem? Are you trying to give them long-term protection? You understand? So what exactly are you doing? We should get to the point where we're taking away the focus from all this spraying and fogging and just focus on chemicals. The focus should be on long-term um, protection. The focus should be on getting to the root cause of the problem. And those are the things that would differentiate a professional from somebody who is not a professional. It should not just be about spraying. It should, the focus should not just be about going there and applying pesticides. What other thing? What value are you giving the client? How, how are you justifying the money you are collecting from them? Why should they hire you over the next pest control company? Those are the things you should think about. What value can I give that the other person is not given? What makes your business so special? What makes your business unique and different? What services do you provide that are unique to your pest control business? Like I said, pest control is so wide. A lot of us will say we are doing fumigation. Fumigation is a specialized aspect of pest control. A lot of people don't do fumigation. What we do is spraying and fogging. So what makes you, what is unique to your business? For example, in the Western world, fumigation is very, it's not common. Very few companies undertake fumigation. 
And here you find that a lot of people, they differentiate their services so much. You find people will tell you, oh, I don't do my job. I just focus on general pest control. But in Nigeria, we do jack of all trade. And when you do jack of all trade, you are master of none. So somebody calls you, oh, that they actually want to do fumigation, actual fumigation now, not spraying and fogging that we all do. You don't know about fumigation, you say, yes, I can do it. Fine, I'm not even saying anybody shouldn't say, yes, I can do it. But when you say, yes, I can do it, look, part, you can partner with somebody who has knowledge, somebody who has the expertise to do it. So don't just jump into everything. You understand? So you can look at services that are unique to your pest control. We need to get to that point where we start specializing. You know, like I said, unconsciously, we are specializing in bed, control, bed bug control now. It's not something that I even set out to do. But just based on the requests that are coming in, we find out that we are specializing in that area. It's almost like any of our technicians can handle bed bugs without any issue. So look at what, what can you provide that is unique to your pest control business. Think through it. Then what's your specialty? I think I kind of covered that already. Do you want to specialize? Termite is a huge market. Do you want to specialize in termite? If you want to specialize, invest in it. Invest in the knowledge. Invest in the um, in the equipment. If you think you are getting requests for it, though, don't go and put your money somewhere and then you are not getting returns and it's, the equipment is just lying there fallow. No, but based on the kind of request you are getting, can you specialize? And when you specialize, you go deeper than others. You understand? You invest in knowledge. You invest in new innovation in that area so that you can actually stand out in the market. You can actually say, oh, if you say, for example, you are um, specialized in termite, we need to see what makes you different from other pest control companies. Is it, is it that you have a new technology you're using? Is it that you're going to do th the things different from the way other pest control companies do it? Let's know how you want to do it. That can be your differentiating factor. So think through about these questions. When you actually think through about these questions and you document them, you could actually find what makes you stand out. What can make you stand out in the industry? Okay, let's move on. So marketing channels. Marketing channels is so, how do you want to reach out to your customers? Remember, we've defined our customers now. We know the kind of people we want to sell to. How do you now want to reach out to them? Which social media networks do you want to use? Do you want to use online, offline, combination of both? Do you want to do conventional? And when we say conventional, when we say conventional, it's still things like you could be newspaper, radio jingle, flyers, proposals. You know, there are so many mediums out there. So sit down and document the ones you want to do. You know, what, which options are available to you? Social media network, do you want to use all of them? I would advise that you don't use all of them. That thing can be overwhelming. Pick the ones that you're comfortable with, or the ones where you think most of your clients, you know, based on the existing client base you have, you already even know how they reach out to you. So which one works best for you? Focus on that. How do you want to serve your customers better? You know, those are things, questions you need to ask yourself that would influence what channels you decide to use for your business. So in talking more about channels, Common channels that can help you to get pest control customers. The number one channel is customer referrals and word of mouth advert advertising. I find a lot of us who say, oh, um, uh, we do referral, we do word of mouth. If you see word of mouth and you are not intentional about it, then you are just waiting for referral. You can't wait for referral. You have to be intentional. For you to say you use customer referrals as a method of getting clients, it has to be intentional. You have to have a process in place, maybe to reward people. You have to consciously ask people for referral. If you don't consciously ask your customer for referral, then you're not doing anything. You're just waiting for referrals to come to you. Yes, it does come to you, but then you are not doing, you are not the one asking for it. So you have to be intentional about asking for referral. You work with somebody or your existing customers, go to them and just say, oh, we've been with you for so so number of years. You know, because pest control is a repetitive business, you would have built relationship over time. So when you build this relationship, capitalize on this relationship, make use of it, go to them. So is there any other clients you think you can refer us to? We'll be glad if you can refer us. And if you actually refer us, we can give you a person percentage of you know, you have to be intentional about customer referrals. We find that a lot of people make their purchasing decisions based on word of mouth. The people actually trust opinion of people who have used your services. So we find out that most purchasing decisions are made through word of mouth, not necessarily. Fine, people go to on the internet, but they actually trust 
somebody who would, who would say that, oh, I've used their services before, that company, they are good, their quality is good, you would, um, they, are, they know what they are doing, they have the expertise, people trust word of mouth than they trust even what they see on the internet. So customer referral word of mouth should be your number one source. Then you have to go into your proposals. Remember your proposal should be targeted at your buyer profiles that you've created. Then you have your sponsored hats. Your sponsored hats also should be targeted based on the customer pro um, buyer profiles you have defined for yourself. And then you have your flyers, networking events. It's very critical. You cannot be a business owner and not network. You have to network. Your church, your children's school, at conferences, anywhere, you have to network. And you must have your two, three minute pitch message in your head. Anywhere you go, people will say, oh, you introduce yourself. Oh, this is what I, you have to be able to, you know, in two, three minutes, talk about your business. If you don't have one, please go and do, go and write it down, have it and memorize it. So that anywhere you go, you introduce yourself. People will say, oh, okay, you know, pest control business, what do you do? You should have your message in your head. It's not just saying, oh, I, um, I'm CEO of so, 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 pest control or so, 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 fumigation company. You have to have your pitch message in your head. So if you don't have it, please go and, go and document one. It could be like two paragraphs just to say something about your business. So when you go to networking events, you're able to pitch your business you know, without thinking about it. So you need to network as a business owner. You are the face of your brand. Nobody knows your business like you. Go out there and network. Then another way, common channels for you to get customer, your website. I think I've talked about it. If you're, you think your website is obsolete, please go back to your website. Go and redesign your website. It's one of the key areas for you to get customers. It's your, it's your 24 hour advertising. Your website is for 24 hour advertising. It's always there. Then another key strategy is cross selling. Like I said, pest control is a repetitive business. So because we do repetitive business, over time we build relationships with our clients. You should be able to cross sell. Think of other services you can provide for this same client. Because they've done business with you, they trust you. So they will listen to you. So for example, COVID-19 came, we all started disinfection. It's an opportunity to sell disinfection to your customers they will readily buy from you rather than somebody they have not had business with. So cross-selling, think of other services you can sell to your customers. Those are ways for you to market your business. Then you need to have a marketing plan. Like I said, it takes money to make money. You have to back up your marketing with money. Set up your marketing goals. You have to start with awareness. People will only buy from businesses that they know. And if they don't know, how will they know you? If they don't see you, they cannot know you. Remember, as a business owner, you have to go outside selling to family and friends and people will know you. After a while, you will exhaust that um, catchment. You will exhaust your family and friends. And for you to grow your business, you have to think outside family and friends. Believe me, even sometimes family and friends will not even buy from you. So you have to think about how you are going to get known in the marketplace. So you have to start with awareness. Let people start to know your brand. At the point at which you are running your awareness campaign, they may not even need pest control services, but they've heard of you. So the day they have a problem or they go somewhere and somebody says, ah, do you even know any pest control company or fumigation as people call it that I can use? I'm saying I have this pest control problem. They will say, oh, I think I know one. I've been seeing them on Instagram or I even heard the jingle on radio. Or oh, okay, I'll get the name for you. That is awareness. So start your marketing with awareness. People would only buy from businesses that they know and they cannot know you if they don't see you. And if you don't advertise, they cannot see you. Start with awareness. Remember I said you, you identify your customer target. So you are speaking the language that your customers can relate with. Then your strategy. Your strategy should include your message and the channel you want to use to reach out to your customer targets. Then you need to have a marketing budget. Your marketing should be backed by money. It takes money to make money. You cannot grow if you are not willing to invest <clears throat> you cannot grow if you're not willing to invest in marketing. 
then you have to evaluate your marketing campaign, your ad campaign. You are running an ad, you need to know what works out for you so that you can tweak it, you can know, you have to check the, measure the results you get from your campaign. Is this thing working for you? Is your marketing effort, is it working? If it's not working, then you amend it. If, if there's a particular one that is working, put more money in the one that is what working. Is that the one that is working? The one that is not working, retweak it or shut that one down. So you have to evaluate the results of your marketing. It's not enough for you just to run campaign and go to sleep. How do you know if it's working? A lot of us, when customers call, or potential customer call your organization. Do you ask them how they heard about your company? It's a critical question to ask. Please, can you tell us how you heard about us? So the moment you start tracking those things, you know what is working. Is it the advert on your vehicle that is working? Is it the advert you are running on Facebook that is working? Is it the one you are running on Instagram that is working? Is it the post that you put on Google, for example, Google My Business that is working? Or is it the e-commerce website? I've even forgotten the one in Nigeria now. I've forgotten. Uh, is it the post you put there that is working? So you need to know what is what marketing effort is working for you. So you have to measure your results. So when people call in, ask them, please, can you let us know how you heard about us? Is it the word of mouth or referral that is working? You need to know what marketing effort is working for you so that you can put more money there. Whatever is working for you, put more money. You know, imagine if, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Imagine if you have your target market, you target like 1,000 people, and then five people call you, use your service. Imagine now if you're able to reach out to 1,000 target people, uh, you're able to target 1,000 people. It means that you get more, more, more people using your services. So the more you're able to reach, the more you're able to convert. You know, sales is a game of numbers. So try and target more people when you target more people, then you're able to convert more. So you need to measure your result. So know what is working for you. If your referral program is working, then put more effort into your referral program. If, <clears throat> if it's your ad that is working, put more, more effort into your ads. So you need to measure your campaign. You can't run marketing and just go to sleep. You need to know what is working. People are calling you. Where, how, how did they get your information? Is it, the, is it the wrap on your vehicle that is working? The number you put on your vehicle? Is it the advert, or is it, maybe you use an influencer. Is it because of the influencer you use that they are calling? You need to know what is working for you so that you can put more money into it. So that's it, that's it. You need to have a marketing plan, put one in place. Then just a wrap up um, of what marketing is. Remember we said, start with targeting your customer. You already know the customers, you've put them in buyer profiles. You know how you want to reach out to them and you put the right message. And then the most, critical, the most critical part of all, provide the best possible service to them. Believe me, marketing cannot help a bad service. Branding cannot help a bad service. <clears throat> if your service is bad, no amount of branding, no amount of marketing can help you. So I'm assuming that you're already providing an excellent service. You have a good, you know, you, like the fortune that sells product, it has a good product already. So when you have a good product, you can back it up with branding and marketing. It makes sense you will sell. But if you have a bad service, go and fix that bad service first. If people are complaining about your pest control service, go and fix it first before you put money into branding and marketing. If not, you are wasting your money. Like I said, pest control is two things, your people and your service. Fix those things first before you start putting money into marketing or branding. When you fix those things and you now put money into marketing and branding, you will see results. People will use your services. Your business will grow. So provide the best possible service. So you target your customer. You reach out to them, speaking a the language they can understand and they can relate with. And then you provide the best possible service. And then you will see results in your business. <clears throat> <clears throat> building trustworthiness and credibility in your brand and every stage of a customer journey is essential to grow your business. There's something called a customer journey. That means every touch point that you, your custom, you have with your customer in an effort to convert them from a potential to a paying customer. And there are three, there are four stages. You have the awareness stage. Awareness stage is when the customer has a problem. And I give an example for a pest control business. They have a pest, they found, for example, they found a bed bug on their bed. So that's the awareness problem. They, they've seen a problem. 
most times people do two things. Some people will go and think, oh, how can I solve this problem myself? Those are the do-it-yourself people. Sometimes they are looking for products. They will look for a product where maybe they can spray to take care of the problem. That is the do-it-yourself people. Then on the other hand, you have people who will say, oh, I need to look for a company that can fix this problem. And then they, go, they can go online and say, oh, I'm searching for a pest control or fumigation company, as most of them would call it. Look for a pest control fumigation company that can take care of the problem for them. Or they call their friends or say, oh, do you know any company that can help me? I just found a bedrock. So that is the awareness stage. awareness stage. They have a problem and they're looking for a solution to the problem. Then the attraction phase is when they now start looking for, oh, those are the people that want to use a provider. They start looking for, okay, how can I get a problem? Remember I said they can call their friends or they look online and they want to verify They've never dealt with you before. So they want to verify that you can deliver excellent service. You can take care of their problem. So they are looking for proof. Um, in looking for proof, what are the things that can help? Your reviews, your testimonials. So that is why we cannot overemphasize the importance of having testimonials and online reviews. Encourage your customers to put online reviews. I know that a lot of people in Nigeria are very reluctant about it. We personally face that. People are reluctant when you say, can you help us put a review on like people? They are not interested in all those things. So you have to look for incentive, a way to encourage them to do it. You can give them questionnaire after the service. So whatever they put on the questionnaire, maybe you can be posting, you can post it. Make sure you have, you know, even testimonials on your website. It's a nice thing to have. So people are looking for proof that you can deliver. So that is the attraction phase. And then the action or the decision phase, now they've made a decision to go with you. So they are ready to use your service and they have expectations. That is the stage at which you have to deliver. Make sure that they have a positive customer experience with you. That is the action and the decision phase. Then when, before, if you, if you are successful with them in the decision phase and the action phase, that's when you can now push them to the retention phase. That is when they now become your loyal customers. They come back to you for repeat business. You now build relationship with them. You've earned their trust. So these are the four sta different stages of the customer journey. It is important for you to, breed, um, to build credibility at every stage of this journey. So when you are talking about your branding and your marketing, think through the journey of your customer. From the point at which they are looking for service to the point at which you convert them to a paying customer. Pay attention to every one of these stages. The stage where they are they have a problem looking for solutions. Are you there? Can they find you when they are looking for solutions to their problems? Can they find your business when they're looking for solutions? When somebody goes online to say, I'm looking for a pest control business in Lagos. I'm looking for a fumigation business and fumigation in Lagos. Can they find your company? Can they find your business? Those are important things to think about. So you have to be present at every stage of your customer's journey. See how you can be, you know, influence every one of those stages. Do you have the proof to show that you can deliver? When they need, can they end your, how can they end your trust? You understand what social, what um, brand, what brand recognition do you have such that they can trust you to deliver? So think through all those things. And then when it comes to action and decision and they decide to use your services, can you deliver the service? Do you have the knowledge? You know, that's why I'm really very, you know, I'm very big on training and being knowledgeable. People ask questions, not that I'm putting anybody down because we're all learning. I still learn. On a weekly basis, I try to make sure that I get some training. I do a lot of research. Internet is there. I find that people ask, a lot of people ask questions that they can really find answers to on the internet, which is not, you know, it is not right. Start with the internet. If you are now facing anything on the internet, then you can now, you know, um, ask people for answers. But sometimes some of the questions are just very simple things that you can find answers on the internet. So you have to be knowledgeable, invest in yourself. If you cannot deliver, no amount of branding or marketing can color your service, please. So at the point they wish to deliver, they've given you an opportunity now to prove yourself. Can you deliver? You have to be there. You have to be able to deliver that excellent service so that you can convert them you know, to a loyal customer so that they can come back to you for repeat business and you can build a relationship and end their trust. You know, Most of the time, most pest control companies, especially the pest control companies that are good, it's difficult to displace them from an account. If you're a good pest control company, it's so difficult for them to replace you. I've realized that, you know, they can put bids out there. Believe me, when you are bidding, you are just bidding on zero because 
they really don't have a problem with their pest control company. If you are a good pest control company, remember I qualify that. So if the company is good, it's so difficult to displace you because <clears throat> We're all human. What goes on in our mind is the devil I know is better than the one, I, the angel I don't. I'd rather stick with this company I know. You know, they are professional. They get the job done. So why do I want to change them? If it is not broken, why am I fixing it? So that's the mindset of a lot of people. So that is why you have to give your best at every time. You know, I'm sure it is not just peculiar to Bell Zappers. There will be so many companies out there where your customer from the one, they are still with you. So if you provide that service, if you are knowledgeable and you do the right thing, you know, believe me, you have lifelong customer, um, customers in pest control. For most of the foreign companies, because I belong to a lot of foreign groups as well, you find a lot of them tell you that they, they service old people that they've said for 20 years, 15 years. That is how pest control is. You build lifelong relationships. So because of that, you're able to convert your customers. They will even, they will even, they will even announce you to their family and friends. I have so many clients that I can't count how many clients they brought to us just because they are satisfied with your service. So make sure you invest in that value, that value that you give the customer. You cannot overemphasize the customer experience. Your customer experience has to be excellent. When you do that, you have a customer for life. Getting and retaining clients. I think we've spoken a lot about this, but I have this quote that I put there. The best marketing you can do is to have a great image and to provide great customer service. And reason why I said this, you can have a great customer service, but if, you're, if your image is not, your branding is not, your reputation out there is not good, how will people know you, are, you have good service? So as much as you, you are able to provide excellent service, you should also have a, an excellent brand out there. Your reputation in the marketplace should also be very good. So the best marketing you can do is to have a great image out there, your reputation out there, your reputation in the marketplace has to be good, and you also have to be able to provide good service at the same time. So how can you get and retain clients? First impression matters. What appearance? How do people feel about you when they see you? And not just about you. Remember, we're talking about your business, and your business is you and your employees. So what professional appearance are you putting out there? First impression matters. Are you delivering value? I don't think I can overemphasize this value, value, value. It has to be, you have to deliver value, 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 value. Think value. When you think value, you think money. Money follows value. So think of all the possible ways to deliver a mind-blowing experience to your customers. An experience where they can say, wow. You need to be, they need to be able to say, wow. When you go back to get feedback from your customers, you need to be able to get positive feedback. And if you get any negative feedback, it is not a problem, address it. So you have to think of different ways that you can make sure your customers have a great customer experience with your business. Don't cut corners. We cannot overemphasize it. Don't cut corners. You cannot cut corners in pest control. It will come back to haunt you. Make sure that you are using the product the way the label says you should use it. Make sure you are following procedures. When you shortchange, you think you are shortchanging the client, you're actually shortchanging yourself because reputation matters in pest control. In service business, reputation matters. So if you are shortchanging the client, you're actually shortchanging yourself because it's going to affect your reputation. You never know who, you know, word of mouth, as much as it helps, it also destroys. Word of mouth helps our reputation and it also destroys our reputation. So it is that's why it's important for you not to cut corners. When you don't cut corners, high paying clients will follow. You know, one thing we do very well is that we are very upfront with our clients. We say it exactly the way it is. We don't say what we cannot do. I don't guarantee the service that I know is impossible to guarantee. So for, for example, mosquito treatment. You know, they'll tell me, oh, mosquito, I'll say, no, I'm sorry, mosquito, I can't guarantee mosquito. Because mosquitoes fly, they can come in again. If you leave your door open and they come in again, then how do I guarantee that? So don't cut corners, be honest with your clients. And believe me, if you don't cut corners, high paying clients will come. Educate your customers. Pest control, like I said, it's gone beyond just spraying. We are not sprayers. We are professionals. We are pest management professionals. As professionals, we need to educate your client. But you cannot give what you don't have. 
That is why it's important for you to be knowledgeable. It's critical for you to have understanding. Why are the pests there in the first place? If you as a pest control and pest manager professional does not understand why the pest is there, how do you educate your clients? And the kind of things you can educate your clients on, educate your clients on conditions, conducive conditions for pests, what they can do, you know, to make sure that they have a long-term control over pests. So educate your clients, what kind of things they, they need to do to make sure that there's no repeat of an infestation, you know? So pest control has gone beyond just spraying. So part of an effort, part of the way you can get and retain your clients is education. Those are things that can differentiate you from the next man. So you have to invest in knowledge because you can only give what you have. So you can only educate your clients if you yourself are educated. If you yourself have the knowledge, then you can pass the knowledge on, you know what to say to your customers. So educate your clients, you know, tell them, you know, why, and then tell, discuss the root causes with them. Tell them about the conditions they need to avoid. Tell them about what they need to do to avoid, to take care of an infestation and avoid a repeat of that infestation. So those are ways you can educate your clients. Then also, I see a lot of people shy away from this. You need to address customer objections. Customer objections are actually learning opportunities. When I started, we really had one customer who kind of put us on our toes. And believe me, we learned so much from that customer. Because they put us on our toes, I would always have to go back to the drawing board. I'll go and do research and say, how can you get rid of this problem? What else can I do? You understand? So if you don't have people that object and um, complain about your services, then you really may not improve yourself because complaints help you to improve. And what is also happens is that there are some customers, you service them, they are not happy. They just keep quiet. Even when you call them for feedback, they just tell you, I have no feedback and or they don't pick your calls. Those are not even helping. The ones that help you more are the ones that complain. So let the complaints keep coming. Encourage your customers to complain. The more they complain, the more you grow your business. Then get feedback. I don't think any service business <laughs> it should exist without getting feedback. Get feedback from your client. You can use a questionnaire. Get feedback after every service is very critical. <clears throat> then when you service multiple clients, uh, when you service corporate clients, develop relationships with different people in our organization. Organization, don't just deal with one person, deal with multiple people, develop relationships with them. So that if that person leaves, you still have people that you can relate with, with the, in the organization. Don't over promise your clients, deliver on your promises. I see a lot of people say, you know, by the time we're done, no more pest, no more this. No, it is called pest control for a reason. It is not eradication. It is not elimination. You know, even though people can be pest free, but they can be pest free if, you know, in addition, if they do what they're supposed to do, because in being pest free, you have to look at different criteria. If you have, um, if they're not able to even enter in the, um, the site in the first place and they, then the right measures are in place, then they can be pest free. So don't promise what you cannot deliver. It is called pest control. It is not pest elimination or eradication, or even promising that they can't see pest again. Because to clients, that's what they want. They don't want to see pest again, but it's not possible. So please don't promise what you can deliver. Always be upfront with your customer, be honest with them. If we are honest with them, they want to use your services, let them go ahead. If they want to go with somebody who would rather tell them lies, it is fine. Everybody cannot be your customer. Then let's talk about useful digital tools for pest control business. Like I said, visibility is a key to business growth. If people don't know you, they can't use your services. If they don't know, um, they won't, if they, they can't know you if they don't see you. So for you to be seen, you have to be visible. So how can you be visible out there in the marketplace? And I mean, in the online space. Now content is king. In fact, people pay a lot for people to develop content for them. So you have to develop content. One useful tool that I've used for my content online is Canva. Canva is very useful and there's a free version. So if you're not there, go and get Canva. Focus on video content. According to research, people are able to connect more to video content. So you can do video content on your, um, you can make it educational content. You can make it behind the scenes. You can do different things on video. You know, just make sure you focus on video content is very good. Then if you are not, if you don't have a listing on Google My Business, go on Google My Business. You need to be there. It is free. Please go on Google My Business. 
Then I also have spoken about this before, online customer reviews, ask your customer for re reviews. If you have to promise them something, you can do that as well. Invest in online paid ads. If people don't know you, they can't use your services. You have to be visible online. In order to be visible online, you have to do ads and monitor your ads, see what is working and what is not. You can also blog. I don't do that. You know, all these things are a lot of effort. So you have to pick what you what will work, what, what will work for you. I don't do everything I put out there. You can blog. You can tell stories. People love stories. You, you can tell stories. You can blog. Tell stories about what happens when you go on client side. People are able to connect with stories, so you can do that. Then your website has to be optimized. You have to use keywords that when people are searching for your type, people are searching for pest control business, can they find you? How does your website rank when people are searching for pest control or searching for fumigation as we all, as people call it? Can they find your company? So those are things you can think about. Social media platforms, which platforms are you using? Don't try to be everywhere at the same time. It can be very overwhelming. Focus on what will work for you and make sure the ones you are posting on, you are consistent and put the right uh, material out there. You can also use email marketing, but you know people don't want information overload. They don't want to be inundated with too much information. So be strategic with your email marketing. And you know, like I said, all these things take time. Make sure whatever you decide to do, make sure you're consistent with it. Don't just start and then stop. So try and be consistent with whatever options you select. Then I want to talk about what has worked for me. Um, branding, branding, branding. That's the number one. When we started out, we started branding from day one. We started setting ourselves apart from day one. And I think that actually helped us. Like I said, I started from my BQ, a very, very small room. Started with one staff. But we started branding from day one because branding is like an investment and you want to build recognition in the marketplace. So start branding. You're not too small. Your business is not too small for branding. Start branding. Another thing that works for me is proper business structure. Put a structure around your business. If you don't put a structure around your business, you're just going to be torn in different directions. You're just going to, you're just going to be putting out fires and you don't want that. One other key thing that helped me is continuous learning and education. One of the reasons why we're all here, I'm happy you invested in yourself. Don't stop learning, learning is continuous. The day we stop learning is the day we, lie, we die. So we have to keep learning and educating yourself. Nobody knows it all in the pest management industry. It's, it's an industry, it's a knowledge industry, knowledge-based industry. So we have to keep learning and educating ourselves. I personally invest in myself from the one I attend conferences anywhere where we're talking pest control. I want to be there, both international conferences and local. You know, I, I, it pains me, you know, when I see people, when I hear people that don't want to invest in your business, invest in your business, invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, you cannot grow. So please invest in yourself, learn, pay for education, pay for coaching, pay for all these things. You know, even now I still keep paying. This, just this week, I registered everybody in the office for um, good manufacturing practices. So invest in yourself, train your staff. You know, you know every learning is, uh, learning is very key. Training is very important. Join professional associations. I know from the previous discussions, we're talking PECAN, go and join PECAN. Go and join PECAN, any professional organization that would advance the cost of the industry you're operating in. Join them, relevant groups. I know a lot of you are in the Fortune group. Join this group, you know, people ask questions, nobody knows it all. You have a lot to learn from those groups. I personally learn from industry experts, from mentors. I'm in groups, I said local and foreign groups, I'm there. I learn, people post things and I'm like, oh, funny thing, sometimes when you even join groups and you hear what people are saying, you realize that, ah, so even these people don't know it all. You know, we're all learning. So join groups, networking events. I think I've spoken about it. Go for events. You are the face of your business. No one knows your business like you. Anywhere where we're talking about the industry, if you want to go in that industry, we should find you there. Clients communication, that also worked for me. We're very big on communication. We make sure we communicate with our clients. We put the right message to our client. We make sure that they know what to expect from us. We carry them along. Another thing that has worked is social media marketing. You know, we run ads, we're out there. So let your business be visible. That also helped and worked for me. Oh, I'd like to end with this quote. I like to end with this quote. 
I saw this quote and I found it very interesting. There are only three currencies in life, time, money, and people. You are going to have to invest something in growing your business. I can't overemphasize this enough. You need to spend on your business. You need to spend money to make money. You need to invest time in your business. You need to invest money in your business. And you, you know the people part. The people part is the effort. So you need to spend time, money, and the effort in your business to grow your business. So don't shy away from paying for training. Don't shy away from pay, paying to learn. You understand? Only three currencies to grow your business, your time, the money you are spending, and the effort you put in. So if you are putting in effort and you are not spending money, you are not going to grow. You have to spend money to make money. Invest in your business. Nothing is too much to invest in your growth. Nothing is too much to invest in knowledge, to invest in how to grow your business or anything that will advance the course of your business. So I'm ending with this quote. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any questions, we'll um, take questions. But if you want to grow your pest control business, I can be your coach. You can reach out to me. I put out my WhatsApp number out there. Reach out to me on WhatsApp. You. Follow me on Instagram, Service Pernua. If you want to business trips, yeah. how to grow your business. I put out free trips and um, free tips from time to time. Reach out to me on Instagram. Follow me. If you have any question, reach out to me personally. That's my WhatsApp number out there. I'm ready to take on any questions. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Um, I wish you all the best in your businesses. And I'm looking forward to all of us working together to influence the future of pest control business in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a session. Hey. You know, I told you guys that this session is going to be fire. Fire. Always coming loaded, coming ready, coming prepared. Thank you so very much, man, for this huge, huge Thank impact. You. How, much, how much can we pay for this? We don't even, <laughs> you can't pay for it. You don't even, I, I would say we don't even deserve it. But thank you for giving us the privilege of having this loaded, um, impactful flow, you know. And can we just honor Mike, honor our videos everywhere, and just do it. Oh, yeah, I Thank you. Thank you so very much man, for this great uh, impact your this session has made. You know, you freely you freely pour out without holding anything back. And this is very inspiring. <laughs> You know, I think I muted everybody. Why well, unmute yourself again? Yeah. So everybody that has participated in this training has really impactful, impacted, inspired, and everybody knows it's really what it is. It is what the time, the resources. You know, the hype is not just for the hype. The hype is real, and we thank God for the impact of this training. And I believe, truly, truly, uh, believe, truly, truly, we have all been really inspired. And I really want to thank you. And, and I want to especially thank every of our facilitators from, from Kubo, Jason Korea, Brand John, Sanitariano Bira, Pest Control Prof, and every other one, um, uh, uh, Tokumbo, the engineer, uh, Francis Wawakwash, training, a uh, new team of uh, EVA software, you know. Everyone, I hope I did not leave out anybody. Everyone, I want to say thank you. I can't pay you, you know, for this. I, I really wish, but uh, well, you came to prepare. You took time to study, to prepare, to put your slides together. And all this, you know, if we are giving you a millionaire each for this session, it is over worth it. And I want to say thank you. May the Lord reward you all, honor you, bless you. And I pray that uh, as you have shared, 
may you only also like the Bible says, see that water can also be watered. Uh, may you be watered accordingly. May you be blessed. May you be inspired in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, every area of your business that you watch, you shall receive watching in Jesus' name. I know I thank all of you. It's been a whole long day, and it's been really worth it. But I'm going to process the video. You know, we have a pest control forum for some of you that are not there. After we are done with that, you know, we have a WhatsApp group now for this training. We are going to use that WhatsApp group to process your certificate. After now, the certificate of participation will be issued to everybody. So the WhatsApp group, we have us in organizing. Then after that, we are going to graduate many of you into the pest control forum, the larger family of the dysfunctional pest control forum, where you will see what the book is there. Sanitary and Obi are there, Francis the Wap are there, all are facilities there. That means learning continues, inspiration continues. So you can't get everything just here. Don't be humble enough to receive knowledge. And I really appreciate all of you for being so patient, for being, for being an amazing audience, for being so consistent, for being available, not minding the data. You keep it, you keep your, you keep, you just put commitment to this. And I commend you and I pray that the Lord bless your business. Prosper. I know you have a lot of questions, but a whole lot of the, you know, it's Friday here in Nigeria. It's almost very too close. So many of us want to go to the bank. But I really, well, you see, we are going to go to the pest control forum. The, the slide, we are going to appeal to Madam Bumi to share the slide with us so that we can I make the slide available for you. You can learn. But on the on our pest control forum, man, she, she always give it to us every day. Like that's why I said we cannot pay her. She's, she's, yeah, Box Up is one of the biggest and the best in this industry with modern technologies, you know, tools and processes. You just admire, admire them. And I think we should appreciate her for what she has done for us in preparing for this training. And I know that it can be for, for the industry to be from glory to glory. We are just doing our part to contribute, to build, to make the industry a better place. And I know with all of us working together, it can only get better, bigger, greater, and, and greater in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone. I know a lot of you want to ask questions. Maybe I will just allow only one person because we need to round up. Also, yeah, my family, just ask a question. Only you. Every other person will meet at the first control forum. Good afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, yes. I hear you, Nathan. Why, Bruce, I really want to commend you for setting up a platform like this for everyone to learn. I commend you on that. Thank you so much, my apostle. My question is, sir, the platform you created, the WhatsApp, please, I want I want the oil to keep running. Like, honestly, there are some, of, there are some persons that the MD organizes training for, I mean, a sponsor for this program. So they can be asking questions from there as well. And so I don't know if you have intention of closing the platform. No, because you made mention of you, everything we need will be getting from the major. They say we saw some of the uh, maybe managers are not opportunity to be in that platform. So please, uh, uh, information can still be seen in this. What, comp what company do you represent? Nathaniel, what name of your company? Okay. I represent Top Shift. Top Shift. Okay, Top Shift. Okay, no problem. We. Learning continues, we keep the energy going, and uh, we will not leave everybody. Part of what we promise is that we will keep everybody alone, we will not leave everybody alone. Mentorship continues, you know, we, are, we continue to bring leaders, leaders. In fact, on the Press Control Forum, we are going to have some of our founder leaders of Press Control. In, in, in that form, that we keep sharing ideas, sharing inspiration with us, and we will all be better for it, I assure you. I assure you. Thank you, Masano. Maybe I should give one more person one more person, one more opportunity to say something to me, Madam Buki. Do you want to say something to her? Just let me give you the opportunity. One person, please. One person. You guys are not talking. So your certificate. Your certificate. Okay, we'll call her You can ask a question. Oh no, it's not a question. I just want to say thank you to um mrs shule god bless you thank you for giving all out without holding back we appreciate you and then to you the oh god the photo thank you so much i really appreciate this well i've been doing cleaning business for a while but 
of recent during COVID, I ventured into into fumigation as we call it here. But I've learned so much as in a lot in this today. Yesterday, the, the, the network was kind of bad. That was why I was asking, can we have the recorded version, a link to the recorded version of yesterday? Because the network on my side was was not too good. But today I've learned so, so much. My books are full. I have screenshots of all sorts. And then it's been beautiful. Thank you so much. God bless you. We'll Thank go you. together. We're learning and God bless everybody. Thank, Thank you, Mrs. Shile. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, madam. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Please, what's the name of your company if you call me? What's your company name? Bukela Resources Limited. Bukela Resources Limited. This is the Thank you, everyone. Thank you so very much again, Madam Shleya. We are so grateful. Thank you for helping us to grow, for inspiring us with the wealth of your knowledge and impacting the world with the investment of your personality. You pay so much to invest in yourself to this level, and you are still giving it all. May the Lord reward you richly and bless you more and more. Amen. Jesus. Amen. And, uh, and once again, I congratulate all of you. You made it. You made it, man. You made it. <laughs> you did it. Yes, we did. When when we when I set up to do something, I do it based on the inspiration that personally we give. I don't look at how many numbers of people. If you like, maybe five. you understand. So if it is only five people that have registered, we say I've done the same thing. If it is one thousand people, we say I've done the same thing. You get it. So because I'm doing what I'm doing, not because anybody said so. Oh, it's no because in fact, if it is about convenience, eh, I would say it's not convenient for me. You know, <laughs> but you see. You need to do what you got to do. What you got to do, you understand? That yeah. Yes, yeah. so we need to do. And if we like to do what we need to do, some of you will be seeing my eyes. I like your eyes looking like this. I, I, after yesterday training, I see was I see was in operation overnight. Overnight from from work down straight to the office to get set for this training, but we still have to turn up. That is what it says. That is what it says. And I see I see flow with all the session for the past five hours or whatever about not closing down at any point. You know. And uh, I really so that is how much commitment you can put into what you are doing. And I encourage all of you, open up to innovations, innovate in this industry, create new things, and you can like uh, said, less specialization. You may not know have ability to do everything. You can just specialize and you'll be better for it. There are companies that are only doing termites in the United States. There are companies that, oh, the only thing they know them for is bed bugs. There are companies that the only thing they know them for is rat to snake, snake remover. That's all. And they are multi million dollar grade companies. So you can actually specialize. And people will know you and over that. If it is a mosquito, it is you. Nothing else. They will call you for time and say, they will not do. But once again, if you want to, I want to, one area I want you to all look forward to is that termite. We are working on something about termite treatment training. And I believe it because it's an area that people have not really taken advantage of. And uh, when you see us advertising, just can you respond? You may not pay, you may pay, I don't know. But you do, the reason why I ask people to say is because I just want to know the commitment of people. Who is committed enough? Yes. Who is committed enough? To even, to even to, is it the 10,000 that you say that made us set up together? Not at all. Not way, no way. So you see, we could have done it fast. We've done this, we've done trainings every day free. We decided to monetize this one by let people even show commitment to what they are learning so that they can value. And that is why you are saying to this time. If you have not paid, you yes. have not that training. Yes. That is, True. You have not that. You have said this is getting boring, but when you remember that you pay ten thousand on you see that is it. That is the You value what you pay for to even the ten. That's, that's true. You get the value and I encourage you. Hey, Eurocon has called us for a seminar. Now. I've paid my 30,000 there. I have the option of staying in Lagos and attending virtually, but I'm going to be there physically. Not because I want to be there physically, it's part of because of if I pay and because I'm the ADS, I don't as nominated me to be there physically for the for the for the member, just where the members that may have issues. It's not convenient for me. Seminar will start on Wednesday. Second, it's like asking me to leave for Abuja Monday. I'm going to be in Abuja Monday to Friday. Don't have my own things to do. I, I'm not being paid for it. Just because I want all the members that may have any issues so that it could be resolved. But if my leaders in the association said they've nominated you, will I say no? 